In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The story of the three holy kings, or the three wise men, is really well known. And it's amazing to think that their journey really happened. Maybe someday someone should retrace their steps and write a diary about the scenes and landscapes these men would have travelled across. It seems like they came from Persia, modern day Iran. That's because the Bible uses this Persian word, Magi, to describe the men. These Magi, these wise princes of Iran, travelled about a thousand miles to reach Bethlehem. It wasn't an easy route either, and they couldn't have just set off upon seeing the star. They would have had to have made plans and gathered together resources and a team to travel with. Altogether, the whole expedition would have taken an entire year, and they would have still have to have then returned home. But why did they bother? A long, dangerous, tiring journey to a land that they had probably barely heard of in search of a king who was not their own. The wise men tell us themselves what their motive is. They say in simple and yet very mysterious words, We saw his star rise in the east and have come to do him homage. That is, we have come to worship him. We have come to worship the true God who has assumed the human nature. It's an amazingly plain and blunt statement if you think about it. Herod asks, why have you travelled these miles to get to my kingdom? What is it that drew you here? Why did you make so many sacrifices to come here? And they reply with powerful simplicity, we saw his star rise in the east and we have come to worship him. What are you here for today at Holy Mass? On Epiphany Sunday, we should try and allow ourselves to be challenged by these holy kings. The three wise men are here to remind us that the core of being a Christian and of coming to Sunday Mass is worship. That should be the short answer if someone asks us, why are you going to Mass this evening? It should be, I have to go and worship the Lord. I need to go and worship my Saviour, who saved me from hell by dying on the cross and who is made present at Holy Mass. The whole reason the Magi get a place in the Bible is because they made this amazing journey to worship and praise God. What then can we learn from them about worshipping God? What was so special about the way they gave honour and praise to God that they have been included in the liturgy and in the scriptures? That's what I'm going to focus on. I have three points. The first thing that the Magi teach us is that worship should be our first priority in life. That's obvious, right? As soon as the wise men knew that God had taken flesh, they hastened on that long journey just to have a short time with him. That's incredible. Those men knew that worship of God had to be number one. That is something we have got to constantly check ourselves on. Am I reminding myself that my worship of God is a primary importance is my journey to Sunday Mass on my mind throughout the week. I read about one saint, Saint Gemma, who used to live the first half of the week in thanksgiving for having received Jesus in Holy Communion, and then the second, preparing her mind for what needs she was going to lay before the Lord when she came to worship him the following Sunday. That's a great way to keep Holy Mass the psychological focus, so the focal point of your week. Nowadays, we call these kings the wise men, 
for the way they made the worship of God their priority. But I wonder back in their day how many people said they were wise going on their crazy a thousand mile journey. Even when they returned, I bet plenty of people mocked them and said, you guys didn't even find God at the end of your journey. You just found a dirty little baby in a grotty old shack. Imagine that, when they describe the basics of the scene, how people would have mocked it. And you know, we face the same hostility as those wise men in keeping worship as our priority. Every now and then there's going to be that voice of the devil in our heads, and maybe even from those around us saying, don't bother with Sunday Mass, stay in and watch TV instead, go to the party, go to the football match, you can pray to God at home, don't worry about it. My friends, if we are going to be wise, the wise men and women of our day, we have to oppose those voices and show the same commitment to worshipping Almighty God as the three holy kings did. Worship has to be our priority. If we are going to be God's people, this commitment can't be part-time. We have to be here or in another Catholic church every Sunday to give him the praise and worship and thanksgiving which is his due for all that he has done in our lives. So that's the first thing the wise men teach us about worship. Worship should be our priority. God's law should come first. And meeting him and praising him should be on our minds as we journey from Sunday to Sunday. Second point. The Magi teach us that worship is primarily something interior, from the heart. The worship that the holy kings offered was not primarily about words. They worship by completely submitting themselves before the true God who had assumed, assumed a human nature. Our English translation sometimes says the kings knelt before Christ, but the word in Greek isn't describing a little genuflection or a bow. We are talking about practically lying down on the floor before the baby Jesus. The hearts of the three holy kings are so on fire with love of God that their love flows forth in gestures of adoration and words of true devotion. At Holy Mass our books tell us what to say and when to stand and when to kneel. So whilst we do similar actions to the kings when we are before our God at Mass, it's very possible for us to do all these acts, but to have our hearts far away from him. The words we have at Holy Mass are there to help move our hearts to worship Almighty God. And I can see, I can see from the altar that many of you are glued to the Mass book. And of course, that makes sense in the part when we hear the readings. But after that, when we get to the part about the Eucharistic sacrifice, the book can actually be an obstacle to real prayer, towards really meeting Jesus Christ, who descends upon this altar and takes complete possession of the bread and wine, stopping them being bread and wine, making them his body and blood. Real worship means shutting the book and turning your heart towards your Saviour in acts of love, faith, thanksgiving and sorrow for sin. That's the second thing the Magi teach us about worship. That worship above all is a movement of the heart and then secondarily what we say or the actions of our bodies. Third point. The wise men let their worship change them. Do you allow your weekly attendance at Holy Mass to truly affect your life? Are you changed through your weekly or daily encounter with our Lord at Holy Mass? Once the Holy Kings met our Lord, they didn't remain the same. They realised the evil of Herod 
and they returned home by a different route. They returned home by another way. Every time we meet our Lord in the flesh and hear his words in the readings, we need to let these words pierce our souls, convict us of where we are falling short, and show us how we need to return to our lives differently. Each Holy Mass is meant to strengthen and enlighten you so you can keep clear from the influence of the devil, the Herods, the wicked angels who want to drag your soul to hell and instead remain on the pathway that leads to heaven. Let us be the wise men and women of our day. Let us keep worship as our priority. Worship that flows from the heart and worship that changes us to become ever increasingly the chosen people of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.